now we are about to lose a substantial amount of life. Okay. Okay, so how many subscribers do you have now on YouTube? We have 1.5 million. <laughs> so you're saying there's 1.5 million people that are gonna see this and if I mess up, are gonna hate me for messing up. No pressure, no pressure. No, I, 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 I feel good. <laughs> what you're about to watch is hands down the most nerve wracking makeover I've ever done. If this goes wrong, <laughs> I am in massive trouble. First of all, thank you for letting me do this. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am so nervous. It's not very often that I'm nervous, but you have way too many people that are in your corner <laughs> for me to mess this one up. So you let's just hope. It's not even possible. <laughs> I can't mess up until I mess up. <laughs> okay, now before we hop in, I want you to know that in my opinion, this is a very special makeover. Not only are you going to hear exactly how I would approach managing thinning hair, even if you wanna keep it longer, you don't wanna cut it short so that you can make it look its most thickest, but you're also gonna hear a story that I am very confident will inspire you every bit as much as it inspired me. Okay, we have not actually talked about what we're gonna do. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your hair. What's going on? I have a lot of extensions going on in here. My hair naturally is very fine. Okay, you do have extensions. I do, yep. Okay. And uh, my hair is naturally very thin and it's thinning on top. Like I've had hair loss over the last several years that I've been fighting. And so trying to get volume at the roots is a thing. And I always wear it long, honestly, just because I'm a mom and I don't have a lot of time to style it every day. Like I love shorter haircuts on me, but I just, because I don't have time to style it, I I, I look like a troll. <laughs> you do not look like a troll. <laughs> when I don't style it, I wake up, it's all crazy and stuff. So I always have had it long just because I can braid it while I sleep. And then when I wake up, I just comb it out. And it's like what I have today. And it's just okay. easy. Back up for one second. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you experienced thinning. So is this something that has happened recently or is this something that you've noticed over a period of time? A period of time. It's been about 10 years or so. Like my hair naturally used to be this thick. Okay. And then about 10 years ago, when I went on a weight loss journey, lost weight and all that, it just fell out and it never grew back. So okay. that's actually not very uncommon. Oh, really? There's so many changes that are going on in your body at that point yeah. that absolutely, it's a stress on your body, mm -hmm. right? And that's something that I think a lot of people don't think about is how much stress, um, good stress, right? Yeah. You've got a new job, you're excited to move to a new place. It's the place you've always wanted. Mm -hmm. You're happy, that's still stress. Yeah. And stress can cause hair loss, yeah. regardless if it's, you know, like good or bad. So you're wearing the extensions more for thinning than it is for specific length. Yes. So what is what does the styling process look like when you actually blow it straight? So what after I wash it, I'll just blow dry it straight with a, a round brush. Okay. And then the deck stays after that. If I want it straight, then I'll flat iron it. And then when you blow dry with the round brush, do you use gel and mousse and stuff like that to try to create volume? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually put some mousse at the roots of my hair. I can't put anything on the ends because then it weighs down, it gets heavy. Okay. But I'll do mousse just at the roots to try to get volume. And then um, don't hate me, Justin, I, I tease it a lot, so. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna have a confession here with, with, with an Do we need to have an intervention? <laughs> I tease the shit out of it all the time, Justin. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. Do you do it literally like, is this an everyday thing that you're doing? Oh, most. Okay. Oh, well, it's just because my hair is so fine and flat. It just lays flat. It, it like sticks to my head like a wet dog. So I'm like, I'm just teasing it to get okay. the volume. When you dry it, okay, so you put gel mousse in it, or a mousse in it for volume. Walk me through the step-by-step -step of what the drying process looks like. So usually I'll get out of the shower. You know, I do deep condition on the ends of my hair because with the extensions they get really really dry okay um and then i'll section it out and i'll start with the crown of my head i'll put the mousse in and then i'll dry it with a round brush and then i'll put the crown in some velcro rollers okay to try to also get the volume and then while they're in the velcro rollers i'll just blow dry out um the rest of my hair and just okay. section it okay i know that you don't do extensions for length necessarily you're doing them for fullness yeah so talk to me about your ideal and a perfect world length and don't say to me whatever you think. Okay, okay. <laughs> and the reason I say this is because I want you to know like we can do any length. Okay. okay? It's not the length that's gonna work for you. Okay. It's what we do inside of that length, how we layer it, where we create volume, where we take volume away. That's what's gonna accentuate things about your face shape. So what I need to know is where do you feel comfortable? Like, what do you feel good? What length do you feel like I'm rocking the hell out of this? I mean, I do like longer hair, okay. so I don't know if this is too long, but ideally like anything past the shoulder would be really good, but I do like long hair because it's kind of my security blanket where I can do different styles okay. and things like that. Okay. Um, but it doesn't have to be like this long. Okay. So, so on the longer side, mm -hmm. below the collarbone. Yes. Definitely. When you look in the mirror, uh -huh. what do you look at and say, these are my favorite things? What do you love about your face shape? I love my eyes. Okay. I like my cheekbone and then my jawline. 
But if I had to pick one feature, I think my eyes is what I'd emphasize the most. You yeah. do have beautiful eyes. And I think you have actually, you have great cheekbones as well. So mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of the same stuff that you're seeing. Is there anything about your face shape that you feel insecure about or anything going on that you would like to maybe draw attention away from? Sometimes I feel like I'm a little fluffy under the chin. It's weird. It's like okay. I have a, a pointed chin, but then underneath the pointed chin is a little bit of fluff. So maybe that. Okay. Talk to me real quick just about the biggest concerns you have with your hair in general right now? What frustrates you aside from the lack of volume? When I've had my hair shorter, it always looks really cute when I style it, but I don't have time to style it every day. Like most days I'm just on the go. So that's why I think I do longer just because I can braid it. And then when I get out of bed, I just undo the braid brush and I go. And I'll, okay. you know, maybe put a little oil on the ends of my hair just to kind of soften it. And then that's it. So I'm kind of low maintenance from day to day. But on days that I'm filming or have meetings and stuff, I'll take the time to style it. It's just on like the regular. So, so here, here's the good thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right now you have layers in your hair. Yes. So this is not a situation where you've got one length hair and we're going to go in and add layers and it's going to create all this, you know, like a bunch more maintenance or something you have to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. With that said, if we bring the length up, anything that we do is still going to require a certain amount of maintenance yeah. to get a really polished look. Yes. The pro is that your day-to-day -day is not going to change much. Yeah. The con is that unless you change your day to day, you're gonna get very similar results. Until you go quite short, it's really hard to get hair to have volume and have the, the bend that creates the volume and the shape and the smoothness that you're looking for without some sort of manipulation. Yeah. Nine out of 10 heads just don't have it, okay? Yeah. That's okay though. What we wanna end with, I think ideally, is a shape that when you do spend the time, you get more of what you're looking for. So you get an amplified version of what you're getting right now. Yeah. Whereas right now you're kind of like, great, I spent all this time, it looks a little smoother, but I still don't have the volume I want. I don't have the overall shape I want. It maybe doesn't function as well. As a businesswoman, you understand ROI, <laughs> know. right? I'll so right that. now your ROI is very low. I know. Okay. So here's the pro and the con to extensions. Mm -hmm. The pro is that they definitely do make your hair thicker. By nature, most extensions, especially if you're using enough to make it thicker, denser, mm -hmm. they're heavy. Yes. So you can feel the difference between your hair up here mm -hmm. and this hair back here. You can at home feel it, but I can tell you this, it's two different heads of hair. Yes. So you have this head of hair and then you have this head of hair. Mm -hmm. Now that's the reason you do extensions. Your extensions are great, by the way. But with that said, it's also something that we have to pay attention to in the overall process of trying to get the volume you want. The pro to this is that you can get this lighter hair to get volume, yeah. but the amount of volume that you need to create to make it look like there's volume because there's much more hair down here mm -hmm. is pretty dramatic. Imagine that there is less hair here. If there's less hair here, it lays in more here. Mm -hmm. Well, there doesn't take a lot of volume up here to make their feel like there's more volume in comparison to what's going on down here. Mm -hmm. But when there's a lot of hair down here, the amount of volume you have to get out here to make it feel like there's more of in comparison is quite dramatic. It can become very hard to get your hair to hold that without taking it short enough in the layering yeah. to make it light enough to get that. Even product won't necessarily always do that, right? Okay. Then we have to think, well, if we want to create this amount of volume up here and we have to take those layers a little bit shorter to get them to do that. Like right now, your shortest layer, right, is down to here. It's mm -hmm. still long hair for your hair texture. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. So even though it's shorter than the length, it's still going to be hard to get that to have volume. So it tells me, well, then we need to bring that length up a little bit to lighten it up. Mm -hmm. Well, if we need to bring this length up a little bit, then we also need to make sure that this length balances with this yeah. so that you don't have a little cap of volume up here and then this hair that hangs there and it looks a bit like a mullet. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> no mullets. No, please. Yeah, we don't want to do a mullet. So okay. the question I have for you, okay. what is the absolute shortest, mm -hmm. I'm going to throw this in here, okay. that you would feel comfortable having? I think like shoulder. Okay. Like so if we took it to your here. collarbone, you feel good about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like shoulder, collarbone, like right in there. Yeah. That doesn't shock you in terms of length at all. Mm -mm. You'd be like, I'm good. Yeah. As long as I can braid it in the back a little bit, like when I sleep, then I think okay. I'm good. That's quite a bit shorter than where we are now. Okay. You're comfortable with that. Yeah. Does that make you nervous at all? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. Just as long as I can braid it in the back when I sleep, I'm good. I'm good, Justin. <laughs> It's like almost cutting all your extensions off. Okay. We're just expensive because <laughs> I feel like this is going to be Little. a very expensive haircut for you. Yeah, that's okay. But I, again, I got the extensions not for length. I got it for volume. So yes. like I'm, I'm okay. Okay. So how far we're talking like, like here, would that be collarbone? That's okay. more like armpit. Yeah. Okay. So taking your length up to armpit, like in uh -huh. here. Yeah, that's perfect. That goes a long way to how much I can take these layers up. Oh, good. And still get them to really make a lot of sense. Okay. Talk to me about length in front. Do we have to? I know you have to pull it back into into a braid, right? Yeah, Set I'm okay with face framing layers. I actually love layers. I love the movement of layers. Like I've okay. used to have layers in the past, and I really like them. So the front can be definitely shorter. It doesn't matter. Amazing cheekbones, like we said. Mm -hmm. This length right here needs to break at your cheeks. Yeah. So we're gonna start those layers, I think, right in about that area, and we'll. 
will connect them down. Okay. But that little piece that kind of breaks is, is one, it's gonna lift your cheekbones even more than they already are. And, but I think it's really gonna allow us to break this up a little bit to open your face up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now, even though we're gonna have a lot of layers in there, you'll be able to bring them back off your face, not fair faucet off your face, okay? Yeah. But open your face up a little bit more to help us get a little bit more volume, but that's also gonna soften and elongate a little bit. If we have a length that lands right in at your chin or near your chin, a lot of stuff coming in, that's what draws emphasis to your chin, right? Or to below your chin. So we wanna break that up a little bit. So we want those pieces to come a little bit longer, like more into your collarbone, okay. and then some softness around through here, and then this to break your cheeks. So we're gonna go get your hair wet and then when we okay. come back, we'll get the cut on. Okay. All right. Okay, now that we're back with your hair wet, first thing we're gonna do though, is I'm gonna work a little bit of oil through it. This is just kind of like, I use it as a cutting serum almost, helps a comb slide through it. But it's also something that I would add in previous to styling your hair anyway, okay. um, to help with frizz and texture and that kind of stuff. I'm mainly gonna apply this down from the mid shaft through the ends, basically because we don't need it so much of the roots. Yeah. And any oil can have the ability to lay roots down a little bit flatter. Now, we are about to lose a substantial amount of length. Okay. <laughs> So that's part of it. <laughs> See how quickly that comes off? I know, that it came comes off, off real fast. You are more than a brand, you're a company. Yes. So talk to me about that. What did that process look like? Uh, it was wild. So I started YouTube in 2008, and then within a year or so, I knew that I wanted to start my own line because at that time, this is, you know, years ago, drugstore makeup was awful. Like you had the Maybelline Dream Mousse that was orange and eyeshadows at that level were not very good. And then you had the high-end makeup, but there wasn't anything that was like great quality that was at least somewhat affordable. So that's when I started my own brand, Makeup Geek, and spent a good year researching ingredients, how to make makeup, and went to a bunch of different labs and I ended up getting kicked out of them because they were like, who is this girl? What is she trying to do? Because they didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't get it. Yeah, they like back then it wasn't very common to be like a content creator. So like, what well, I was like, no, I do videos on YouTube. I teach makeup. None of the labs would get back to me. And I spent a year trying to find different ones. We drove from the time I was living in Michigan to Canada and uh, that lab, because I was like, I'm here to start a makeup line. You guys aren't answering my calls. I really want to do this. I saved up my money to start this line. And uh, they made me sit in the waiting room for hours and then finally sent me out. And we drove like six hours each way. Explain why, <laughs> because they just didn't believe that you they, were gonna do it? Yeah, they didn't believe I was real and didn't know who I was, like who was this girl and didn't think I was, you know, for real. And so I finally found a, a lab that was gonna work with me and launched my line in uh, 2011 and started Makeup Geek Cosmetics. Less than five years, it went from zero revenue in my parents' basement to a $22 million company. A $22 million company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in such a short time too, the growth was beyond anything I ever expected. I was just starting it because, you know, I wanted to bring something to people who are watching my videos, good quality makeup for, you know, somewhat affordable. And I didn't think it would ever blow up to that. So it was a wild ride. What do you think attributed to it blowing up so so dramatically? Honestly, social media, there's just so many creators that believed in the brand and loved the products that talked about it. So I owe so much to them and, and obviously to the people who are watching my videos, they supported it and they told their friends and just, it was a group effort. It was definitely not just me. It was everyone combined just really helped supporting it. It helped it blew up like that, so. I will argue <laughs> that part of its, its success mm -hmm. was because you had that kind of mindset. Yeah. The fact that like, you know, a lot of people out there be like, look what I did. And you're like, look what we did. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's, it's always, it takes a village. Like it was never just me. It was so many people that helped pull that off. That is <laughs> so incredible. Yeah. I love what I do. So what made you decide to start YouTube? Tell me your story. Oh, uh, I started uh, in COVID because you couldn't go to the salon. Oh yeah. And uh, uh, you know, for me, I was like, well, you know, it, as a stylist, if you're not at the salon, you're not earning money. Exactly. Which has always been my kind of frustration with being behind the chair, if I'm honest. So I learned, you know, 30 years behind the chair, basically, is you learn that, you know, if you take off more than a few weeks, you lose a lot of clientele because they have to go somewhere because yes. you're not there for them, right? Yep. For me, that was just a frustration. And I would see people like my brother who works at Intel, right? He's two years older than myself. I'd see him and he'd be, you know, take a sabbatical for three months and go to Costa Rica. And I'm like, wow. what is that like? Yeah. You know? And so... Deanna and I were already looking for stuff that we could do online that would allow us a little bit more freedom so that eventually someday, you know, we would have an option to go, you know, do whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, okay, obviously COVID was a horrible experience for many people mm -hmm. and I'm not downplaying it or discounting it whatsoever. Yeah. But if I'm honest, you know, I have to also say that it was one of the best things for us because it forced me into doing what we do on YouTube and this has completely changed our life. Yes. You know? Yep. And so it really, it's, it allows us to do, you know, what, 
what we've always wanted to do, but I honestly didn't have the ability to do it previously. And I, to be completely honest, I didn't realize that it would take us to where it took us all right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you just started during COVID, like you have grown really fast. That's incredible. I don't see, you know, 1.5 million subscribers. <laughs> if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Is that the perfect time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'll be in the link below. Hit It'll that be, subscribe. Yes. Go Please watch do. Justin. I never ask for that. I always forget to say <laughs> subscribe. Yeah. No, I, you got to. You know, my wife used to make fun of me. When I started YouTube, mm -hmm. I literally wanted to become a YouTuber. That was my goal. I was like, wow. I want to be a YouTuber. Yes. Like, I watch these guys like Peter McKinnon and all these other people and I want to be like them. Yes. Like I, I sound like a 10 year old, right? Oh, no. Like when I grew up, I want to be, but I did. And, and my wife made fun of me for it. You know, Diana was like, oh, YouTuber, blah, 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 blah. And now I think everyone does that. When most family members, like for anyone who says like, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber, like, well, get a real job. Like it's, yeah. it's the story for everyone. And then once they see like how successful you really can be doing this, they're like, oh, this, like, this is a real job. Yeah. Coming like, from the lady who built a $20 million <laughs> company from being a YouTuber, yes. right? Like, yeah, I feel so grateful though. I, every day I wake up, I'm like, wow, I live such a blessed life to get to do what I love. A hundred percent we do, right? Oh my gosh. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get your hair dry. Okay. And then everything else I'm going to do after it's dry. Alrighty. And let's take this off. So All right. Are you ready? I'm excited. I'm a little are nervous. Ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Put this over there. Let me just give you a little bit of a fluff here just to make sure everything's perfect. Okay. We've got the wind going for the outside. So this is very I know, I feel like a supermodel right now. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Oh my gosh. Do you love it? I love it. That looks so good. So we added a lot of layering down at the bottom, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. More than I typically would because you have extensions. Yeah. We want to make that kind of match the, with the density appearance mm -hmm. of this so that it all kind of blends together a little bit more, but still leaving it looking thick, right? Yeah. So it just tapers in just a little bit more. Yeah. This layer that breaks right at your cheekbone here is really going to help to sell that shape of lifting the eye up. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing this back off of your face a little bit, okay? Yeah. This is tapered in. This being tapered in like this creates an illusion of more volume up here, which is going to lift the eye, draw more attention to your cheekbones, more attention to jaw structure, and really actually elongate your face like we talked about before. Mm -hmm. This breaking right at your cheekbone also is going to help draw a little bit more emphasis to your eyes. We yeah. talked about how beautiful they are. You still have enough length to pull it back, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Easily. Yeah, it does. I, I still can't believe how much volume has gone at my roots. Like, that's crazy. Amazing. I Thank love you it. so much. If you want to know anything about what we used in our hair as far as styling aids go or anything like that, I'm going to make sure that we link all of that stuff in the description. And then also, if you somehow have been living in a rock and you're unfamiliar with who this amazing lady is, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that we leave her link in the description as well so you can check out her channel. Anything about makeup, definitely you need to go find her. She's a wealth of information. You're going to love it. But otherwise, I just thank you for trusting me enough to actually let me do this. Yes, absolutely. I was so excited for this morning. I woke up. I was like, I'm getting my hair done today. <laughs> right? You have no idea what we're doing. So that's an unfounded excitement to potentially. I, I trusted you, Justin. I trusted you. <laughs> While you're uh, hanging out here, why don't you go hang out over here? Watch this and uh, we'll, I'll see you over there. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>